statement that is dynamic. So let's go and let's build this. Okay? And we should be able to build at least a crude version of this today, and then we can beef it up on, on Tuesday. First thing we need to do is we need to edit our grid view to add the link to it. we need to do is we need to uh, edit this grid view to um, include a link and, and to make a link. Now again, because I knew we were going to do this eventually, I had already put the faculty ID in the data source, right? So I don't need to change the data source. That's just like sort of, if you remember my cautionary thing, you know, always include your keys. You know, always include the primary key, at least of the main table that you're talking about here. So if I didn't, I'd have to go in and change that as well. All right, But I did. I had foresight, so I went in and put it in here. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go and put edit columns. And I'm going to pick from this available fields, I'm going to pick a hyperlink field. All right, I'm adding a link. Right? So I click Add. I can give the text that I want for that link. And the text will be simply details. All right, So it will say details. That will be the text that the user will click on. Now I have a couple of parameters all right, that I, uh, or I have a couple of things I have to put in. All right. First thing I have is a data navigate URL fields. All right. What this is, is these are the pieces of data that I want to put on the query string. Well, what did I say I want to put on the query string? The FID. So I'll click this and I'll type in FID. All right. I could type in more if I wanted to pass more. All right. But I want to pass the FID. If you recall, um, I said one argument for single part keys in, in web applications is that it's easier to pass. You know, if the faculty ID had multiple parts, then I'd have to pass two things. Not that that's a huge deal, but it's easier to pass one. All right. So I'll click OK. Now. This is a part that, that some students find a little tricky. Here is where you put the URL in. All right. And what do I want my URL to be? Part of it I already know. Part of it is hard coded, right? Part of it is always going to be details.aspx question mark id equals. All right. Now I have to specify which of those data fields that I just defined are going to get put in there. And I do that with a curly bracket zero curly bracket. If you remember, in the data navigate field, I could specify one or more than one field that I want to appear on the query string. One or more than one piece of data that I want to appear on the query string. In this case, there's only one. Now remember that in most things programming, you don't start counting with one, you start counting with zero. So therefore, this FID is the zeroth element 
on the list. All right. If I was passing another piece of data, that would be element number one and element number two. Would that show up as zero comma one? Then? Well, it would depend on how I would want to pass it. If I, let's say, for example, I wanted to pass the department ID that this professor taught in, then it would be something like this. And department ID equals curly bracket one. Because with everything on the, on the query string, you have the name of the variable equals, and then you have the value. So if I was passing more than one field, I'd have an ampersand, the name of the second field equals, and then curly bracket one. Why is zero the FID? Zero is the FID because when I define the list, of data navigate fields, I put FID in first. Okay? So it doesn't have anything to do with the data source or anything like that. I mean, I guess indirectly it does. It has to do with how I defined them in this data navigate URL fields. So in that previous example, if I also want to put the department ID, I would have put FID on the first line and department ID on the second line. So FID would be element zero, department would be element one. So that's what I put in as a data navigate URL. So I'm going to copy and paste that here. And now I'm going to run it. What was that title of that where you just put that in? Data navigate URL format string. Now if we go and run this, The link isn't going to work, right, because I haven't made that details page yet. But at least the link will be constructed correctly. So let's go and do a search. B. All right. If you look, well, you can't really see the status bar. Let's do a view source. If we look at the URLs here, notice details ASPX, question mark ID equals 2. 2 must be the ID for Blanchard. For Brown, details ASPX ID equals 5. 5 must be the ID for Brown. So we've constructed our link correctly. Now all we have to do is, is the payoff. All right? Write that details ASPX page. All right? And have it pluck that value off the query string and fill in the parameter. So, I'm going to go and create my new page web form. I'll call it details.aspx. I'm not going to use a grid view in this case. A grid view is, is suitable for displaying multiple rows from a table, right? When we do a search of faculty by last name, we could get multiple faculty people. So we want a grid view for that. If I'm pulling up a specific faculty member, there's only one that I'm getting. Therefore, a detail, uh, I'm sorry, a grid view is not appropriate. A details view is what I want to use. You'll see a lot of similarities between the two. Really, the difference is, is that one shows one is best suited for multiple rows. One is best suited for a single row. I'll go in and make my data source. Configure it. Connection string. Yeah, I want to pick the connection string now. I want to use the same connection string just in case anything changes. Even the type of database, even if this was converted to a SQL Server database or an Oracle database, provided I went in my web config file and updated that line correctly, everything should work without any hitches. All right, I'm going to go in and specify my own SQL statement for this. And I'm going to say select star from faculty 
where FID equals question mark. Remember, we have the first part of the SQL statement that is identical. For every person, that select star from faculty where FID equals is valid. <coughs> the different part is going to be the actual value that we're going to put in for the FID. And that's a parameter. And therefore, as a parameter, we, in our SQL statement, we put a question mark. Now, just like with the text box in the previous page, we're now going to go in, when I hit next here, and it's going to ask me where to get the value of that tech, uh, uh, parameter from. Now, previously I said I wanted it from the control. I don't want it from a control. I want it from the query string. So I'll select query string. What's the name of the field on the query string? ID. Right? That's what I called it in the link. If you remember, the link said details.asbx question mark ID equals such and such. So I select ID. Next, I can test my query. All right. Finish. I can now then bind this together. Do my little uh, auto format. And now I can select B, and if I click details for that, notice the link says details ASPX ID equals five. All right, it'll call that second page and it will show all the details for that person. If I pick the other person, the link says ID equals 2, it will bring up all the details for that person. Okay, so what did we learn today? What did we go over in today's example that it should be helpful going forward? We went over how to write a parameterized query. And by a parameterized query, I mean a query where pieces of it are hard-coded, but certain values, especially in the where clause, for selects anyhow, get populated at runtime from different places within your application. We've seen two places that they could be populated from. A control, such as a text box, um, or... Um, the query string. So we found two places that that variable can, or that parameter can get populated from. The other thing we saw is to, how to create a hyperlink field on our grid that's dynamic, that depends on the data. All right. Um, one of the key things in web programming of all sorts is being an, a, a stateless protocol, you have to remember stuff. The protocol itself doesn't remember any request. Each request is a standalone request. Therefore, I have to tell it, hey, this is the person I want. And in this case, I told it that that's the person I want based on the fact that my link included the ID number for that particular faculty member. Any questions about this? All right. We'll pick up on this next time, and we'll... Add some stuff to that details view, all right, um, because ideally we want to see pictures of the people, all right, uh, and in addition we'll add things like maybe showing a list of all the students that that faculty person advises, all right, we'll see you over in lab.